I want to talk about swearing this morning. Have you noticed more women using bad language? Quentin Letts is a columnist then with the Daily Mail, and he says he's fed up of female celebrities using foul language in public. Now, he's got Helen Mirren, Kira Knightley and Kate Winslet in his sights and says that modern female celebrities need to wash their mouths out with soap. A few minutes ago, he gave me his thoughts as to why he feels so strongly about this. Uh, because I think these actresses, who have very privileged positions in our society, should be setting a better example particularly to the young. And here they are. I mean, it just strikes me as strange that they have to resort to such bad language. Uh, Dame Helen Mirren, there she was the other night, had gone to tremendous lengths to look beautiful. She got up on stage, and then she started speaking like a chippy who just whacked his thumb with a hammer. And I just don't think it's necessary. I think it shows a lack of imagination. And I think it's disrespectful to audiences to be quite so coarse and uh, ill-spoken. So have you got a particular problem with women swearing? Uh, no, I don't. I don't. I don't. I've been trying to work this out. I mean, I'm a bloke with two daughters, and am I being sexist in saying that I don't like uh, women swearing? I think I don't like men swearing either, actually. But uh, maybe there is a slight difference in that if I heard my daughters swearing, would I be more offended than if my son was swearing? Gosh, you know, I've been tussling with that one, and I suppose it comes down to my, uh, my suspicion that Dame Helen and uh, um, Sheridan Smith and uh, who are the other women, Kira Knightley, Kate Winslet, Olivia Coleman, I think they, these uh, slightly privileged ladies are probably swearing because they want to be more egalitarian, they want to be like the blokes. And I don't think it's very wise, because if a bloke hears a, uh, a girl swearing, I think he's not going to treat her with any respect. I think he's probably going to be slightly crueler and treat her worse, and I don't think that's a really great upshot for egalitarianism. You, you don't think that's a bit 1950s, that well, attitude? Well, maybe the 1950s had things better when it came to swearing than we do today. You know, every, so it's a very pejorative term, isn't it? 1950s, 1950s, you must be so old-fashioned. Well, maybe things were better then in this respect. How influential do you think these celebrities are, then? I think they are uh, exceedingly uh, influential. I think they are influential in, uh, in their, their dress and in their manners and um, also in the sort of films that they choose and the sort of subjects they choose. And so particularly influential, I think, on, on, on young girls and on, on my daughters, for instance, are very interested in celebrities and they, they will behave in a way that they see the celebrities behaving. I think, yeah, very influential. Do you think we should try and stop, Tina, make a bigger effort to, to, to try and stop all teenagers swearing then? Yes, I do. And I also think, for instance, I have very strong feelings about advertising. And uh, I just, I, don't, I think it coarsens society. It lowers the bar for language. I think it's disrespectful. It makes society more violent. And, uh, you know, people say, oh, you're just old fashioned, you're unrealistic. Well, I don't think that it really does anyone any favours when uh, public discourse goes to such a low level. I just think it, it makes us less civilised. So Quentin Letts of the Daily Mail, talking to me just a few minutes ago, you can read his double-page spread on this in the Daily Mail today. He wonders if Dame Helen Mirren would say the F word in front of the Queen, the woman uh, that she plays so often on stage. He thinks not. Uh, she would be respectful. So why does she think it's OK to swear at award ceremonies? I want to know, having listened to that, whether you think Quentin Letts, he's been a little bit old-fashioned about this, or whether you support every word he says. This is the number, 01642 22551. Edward Thomas is from the Campaign for Courtesy. Morning to you, Edward. Good morning to you. Do you support him? I, I couldn't believe how much I, I was in support of, of Quentin Letts. I didn't realise he was somebody that, <laughs> that uh, I, w I would agree with. But yes, uh, uh, every word, particularly he, he said about um, uh, the 1950s, and I, I, I think you were gently accusing him of being old-fashioned. I was rather reminded of the gentleman on, on a programme about Ludlow recently who said, um, people say I should move with the times. Well, why? If the times are going in the wrong direction, why should I move with them? But he was making the point, wasn't he, Edward, that if, if a woman swears, a, a man is, is less likely to treat that woman with respect. Yes, uh, yes, and that may be unfortunate in, in these days of equality. Perhaps we should see uh, that, that both sexes should uh, be treated the same way in that respect. And, and indeed, I do so, whether it's a, it's a bloke or a woman. Um, I... I, I 
there's just no need for it. And partic- I find it particularly irksome from film stars and people who are in the public eye. They seem to think that they should be able to express themselves at all costs in whatever way they, uh, they wish to do so. Because if, if they don't, they're somehow repressed from their own self-expression. Yeah. So would last, you? Last, there was a, 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 an example only last night on Newsnight. Kevin Spacey talking about his departure from the old Vic, and he said it's it's not a case that I'm I'm just going to <clears throat> off to America. And it was bleeped out even at ten thirty on BBC Television. And, and did I they, thought, did why did you have to say that? Why couldn't you say I'm not talking about leaving for America? It's such a pity. And, and were they right to bleep it out at ten thirty at night on BBC Two? Well, I think that was significant in itself. Uh, the fact that they do. Uh, bleep out these these things. Even uh, your researcher, when I had a delightful conversation with her earlier this morning, <clears throat> she said to me, and you won't actually swear, will you? Well, I think that's significant. Why did she say that? Why did they bleep it out last night? It's clearly because a considerable number of people find it objectionable. Do you think, have you noticed more women swearing, Edward? That is undoubtedly true, yes. In the, in the last few years, there was a time, I, I grew up in Hackney in the 1950s, the, uh, the, the much uh, deranged 1950s, um, and that was, a, it was the case. You know, the 1950s, I was reminded of what Quentin Lett said. I went to a, a school, an all-boys school in Hackney, and in the playground we used all the words, everything. The moment we came out of the, the playground into the public arena, as it were, it all stopped. And it, certainly I, I can remember when swearing did uh, start becoming more public. You tended not to find women swearing, um, but you, you do now, yes, much, much more so. I, I think that is probably true. Anything wrong with that, then? I mean, the fact that, that women are swearing more. Again, I agree with Quentin Letts. He doesn't like it from either men or from women. And, um, I, and, and I think it's fair enough to leave it at that. You know, in fact, it isn't the words so much themselves. It's the lack of feeling and interest for other people's uh, sensitivities. It doesn't matter to me if two people swear in their own company and both are, find it acceptable. But it's when it goes into the public arena and, and Dame Helen and all these people at award ceremonies, who was the other? bloke um uh, rory kinnear did the same i gather at a recent award ceremony and i think it's arrogant i really do all right well well tom uh, just one final point thomas do yes. you watch do you watch mrs brown's boys no i don't i don't and partly it's because i'm told that um, they use uh, euphemistically they say this program is going to contain strong language and i'm not interested i have to hear it at certain times of the day i don't expect to hear it in my entertainment so no i've um, I've, I've never given mrs brown's boys a thought all right edward thomas thank you edward is uh, from the campaign for courtesy is it disrespectful to swear? So just looking at the Daily Mail at the moment, pages 22 and 23, uh, double page spread there by Quentin Letts. We've just had him on the show. The headline across the top, by the way, uh, says, why do female stars swear so much? So it is the fact that it's women doing the swearing that seems to particularly concern Quentin Letts. Susan is in, uh, well, near Whitby. Morning, Susan. Good morning. What do you think? Do you agree with Quentin, then, that, that women should cut it out? I think anybody should cut it out. Um, can't say I haven't been guilty of it myself on some occasions. I need a slap across the wrists if, if I have. So on what sort of occasion would he swear? I think sometimes it, it does come out of frustration, but it also comes from a paucity of language. Um, you know, I feel very sad that English is being... Um, radically changed and um, is not as precise or as communicative as it used to be, or that's how it seems to me, you know, approaching 70. Um, rules of grammar and correct ways of speaking that simply enable us all to be able to talk to each other on the same level. Um, you know, they don't distinguish between areas and parts of society and so forth if we have a commonality of language. So there's definitely more swearing than there was, say, 50 years ago. Oh, yes, I think so, yes. Certainly within the, the circles that, that I have moved. And some of the words, as I say, when you actually stop and analyse a sentence, the particular F word that comes in every third word, it has no bearing whatsoever on the meaning of the sentence. But, you know, whatever is communicated is spattered with this word all the way through, and you think, 
Are, are you actually understanding what that word means and what it um, says in the context of this particular sentence? And when I spoke to Quentin let's, earlier this morning, he said that if a woman swears regularly, a man is less likely to treat that woman with respect. Yes, I think that's... Is that true? I believe that's true, yes. In general terms, I mean, whenever we make a generalisation, there's always exceptions. But I think, thankfully, there is still a level of respect um, between individuals, not just between men and women, but between members of the same sex as well. If someone behaves properly, speaks properly and res respectfully, then generally speaking they are treated in the same way. And you know, you do sometimes see situations where somebody is bemoaning their lot in the way that they're treated. And then you think, well, if, if you did behave in a better manner, then people would respond to you in a better manner. So even with equality, Susan, women need to act in a ladylike way? Women need to act as men need to act in a proper, respectful manner. I don't think the gender issue is particularly pertinent. I think it's about human beings behaving properly and respectfully. I, well, I agree. It's just that Quentin, this headline on the Quentin Let's feature says, why do female stars swear well, so Well, there much? you go, you see, we, we're constantly being taken up a side road into what is, in effect, another issue, rather than tackling the principal issue, which is about what words are used to communicate by human beings. Susan, thank you very much. But at the moment, we're discussing whether it's disrespectful to swear. Mike Buchanan is leader of Justice for Men and Boys. Mike, good morning to you. Yes, good morning, Mike. What, what do you think? Um, yes, I, I agree with Quentin. I, I'm shocked on a daily basis at the language women use, even whilst in public, where people have little choice but to overhear what they have to say. Now, why, why are you shocked? Well, uh, uh, it called me old fashioned, but I loathe the modern trend for women to act more like men and men more like women. At one time, women played a, a very important role in making the world a more civilised and pleasant place. But since women stopped cooperating with men and started competing with them, it's maybe inevitable, of, it's maybe inevitable that they've picked up some of men's bad habits and using coarse language is just one of them. Right, so it puts you right off a woman, does it, if she swears? I, I'm sorry, Mike, I didn't quite catch that. It puts you right off a woman, does it, if she swears? Yes, it, yes, it does. I think it's, um, it, it, it is unladylike. I mean, again, an old-fashioned term, maybe, but uh, I, I kind of liked it when, when the world... We, you know, when, when, when there's something to be, to be said for men to be gentlemen and women to be ladies. So does, does that mean it's OK for men to swear and, and women should not? No, no, I'm not saying it's OK, but it's, it's um, you know, it's, it's not, so, it's not, so, it's not uh, such, uh, such a big deal in my view. No, I, I'd agree in a sense with the last lady who, who, who spoke to you who said that, you know, she, she, she'd, she'd prefer if both the men and women, um, you know, use, use less coarse language. Yeah, Quentin also goes on in his article to say, and I think this is interesting, that refraining from swearing is an exercise in self-control. Uh, he says it's the most liberating, one of the most liberating things we can teach our kids uh, is not to swear. It'll help them get a job and fulfil their potential. Agreed. Absolutely agree with him. And yet the swearing everywhere, isn't there? There, there is. I mean, uh, I, mean and, and I, I guess you, you, you hear it more from young women, but, you know, you, you know even, even uh, sort of schoolgirls walk, walk, uh, um, uh, walking along will use language that, I mean, 30 or 40 years ago, you know, uh, um, um, men wouldn't use in public. It's, it's really, it's, it's, it's just, you know, British society has become very, very coarse. Would you ever say anything? If you, if you hear it on a train or if you hear it on the street, would you ever tackle them? Um, I, I, I'm, I'm ashamed to say that, 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 that I don't, Mike. I sort of... Um, I, I just groan, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, grate my teeth. Um, but no, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's not as if, I mean, what, you know, what, um, what's the point? It's hardly going to stop them, is it? I don't know. <laughs> maybe, we should, maybe we should all give it a go. Mike, thank you very much for that. I say that because uh, I'm no better. I was uh, on a train about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, ironically, it was in the quiet coach, where it's always very noisy, of course. And there were there were a couple of a uh, couple of lads actually uh, swearing like troopers. Really, really offensive stuff. Did I say anything? No. Did anybody else say anything? No. We just did that typically British thing of just sort of huffing and puffing and shrugging our shoulders. Let's uh, take some of your comments on this. What people say, Nick? Welcome back. Yes, oh, thank you. Yes, there's plenty coming in on this. David was in touch first and he says it's lazy to swear all the time. He thinks the English language has a huge vocabulary. Why use a swear word when a better word exists? 
Also, we've heard from John this morning. He says, a simple no from me, it can, if it can be disrespectful, if you're aiming it at a specific person, especially. He says, but sometimes I feel it's warranted to swear, like when a dangerous driver almost runs you off the road, or when you are totally shocked at something, and the one that gets me the most is when he hurts himself. So he says, times have changed and will continue to change. It's just another thing that's become more socially acceptable. Also, Audrey in Skelton gave us a call earlier and she says, I don't see the necessity to swear. Also, it then just becomes habit. She says, I'm a football fan and when I go to matches, I tell people around me who swear to stop and I tell them that it hurts my ears. Oh, brave so woman. there we go. Audrey's an example of somebody who does <laughs> confront them. Yeah, absolutely. She says, also, I remind them that they're only teaching their young ones to swear. She says, I get a look but that's all. Also, Baz is at work with Eddie today and they've been in touch and they think that Kate, who we spoke to just earlier on, she was spot on. They agree with her. Also, we've had a tweet from Riggles and he says, it depends on how hard you step on that plug. Absolutely right. Oh, there's nothing worse, is there? No. It is a little quandary for you then, a dilemma, Nick. You're walking down the street yep. and, and there's a parent swearing at a small child in a buggy. <gasps> I hate well, that. Well, so do I. But have you ever said anything? No. Do you know what I was just thinking then when you said about not saying anything? And actually, yes, I'm one of those people as well. I do have one example that I was looking after a friend's little girl, uh, somebody in front swearing away, and I could see she was looking at me as if to say, you know, I know exactly what they're saying and they shouldn't be saying that. So I purposely out loud, because she said, you know, he's, he's swearing. And I said, yes, he is, isn't he? And it's naughty. You don't swear. And sort of Confront told her the right and wrong, making sure that that person could hear. And again, yeah. I just got a bit of a look. Yeah, I should imagine you did. It would take some nerve. I'm not entirely sure it is the right thing to actually intervene. Uh, if, if you see a grown-up swearing at a small child, should we all step in and say, hey, don't speak to them like that?